All right, today we're going to do two small entities. Uh, we're going to do the laser or the beam, I guess. There's actually two of those. And then uh, wind. They're both very simple to set up. And so I'm going to have you sort of dress up what we've been doing the last few days with these entities, special effects, if you want to call it that. And, um, and that'll kind of cover us until Monday. So let me get over to my map here. So if you look up, let me move out of the way here, you'll see that the power cables are moving a little bit. And you'll also see that there's a random electrical bolt flashing between the middle power pole and seemingly random-ish spots around the map. And if we sit long enough, there you go, you'll see the wind actually picks up. It kind of is gusting right now and then it'll kind of drop back down to its normal and so the wind is variable it kind of fluctuates and gusts and blows a little bit harder and softer so it's not a continuous straight amount of wind it's you know it's kind of realistic kind of looks good um, and it's kind of nice because it adds just a little bit of movement to things like power cables and, and things that are hanging if they're light enough not everything's going to move but, um, you know, just a little bit of sway in the power cable sometimes. Just that on its own looks fun. And then, of course, the sparks are um, interesting. Um, they don't seem to damage the player no matter what I do to them. Uh, for an intermittent beam, you could put a trigger hurt on it if you wanted to. But um, I'm not super worried about it at this point. We're just going to use it as a special effect. All right, let's look at the editor. We'll start with the wind, because the wind is the easiest thing that we've done. So yesterday we put in uh, utility poles, and you're supposed to have strung at least two cables between them with some sag in the cables, so we have something that looks kind of like this. So the wind entity is this guy right here. He's really simple. You go to your entity tool. It's called ENV Wind. Um, you can name it. And then down here is the speed of the wind. So the, what you saw on my map is all the default settings. I didn't play with any of these. Um, but you're welcome to play around with them and make them a little bit stronger if you'd like to. So go ahead and apply that. And you just put this anywhere on your map. It's, it, it covers the entire map. You could put, put it anywhere. You know, I, I would probably put it wherever your uh, environmental lights are at. You know, like your your main entities for controlling the, the light in the sky and stuff like that, I think I'd put him in the same spot. If you've got a fog controller, you know, maybe the same spot. But really, it's up to you. Put it wherever you want. All right, now the spark or the laser or the beam or, or whatever you want to call it, um, there's actually two different entities that we use for that. So let me drop them out here and I'll put them right next to each other. So these are the two entities here. So this one is called the ENV laser. And this one is called the ENV beam. So I use the beam, um, but the difference is the beam will pass through solid objects, whereas the laser doesn't. It stops when it hits its first solid object. So, um, you know, it's kind of... It, I guess it just depends on how you've got your level set up. They're both done pretty much the same. Um, they can both be turned on and off through input and output. Um, but essentially, they, they do about the same thing. There, there's not a whole lot of difference between them. Um, so let's go ahead and do the beam first. So I named it just so I could turn it off if I wanted to. The uh, beam color is just the color that the beam is going to be. So mine's electricity, so I picked kind of a bluish green. Um, brightness, 0 to 255, so, um, or 256, so let, let's just go ahead and turn it up a little bit. All right, radius. So what this does is if you don't give it targets, it will attempt to randomly strike around the uh, wherever this is at. So... You could give it a shot. 256 means it would be trying to hit anything around it. and um, But it has to be a solid surface. And so I kind of like giving it a surface to aim at. But, you know, 
do whatever you want. You can play around with it. The life. So this is how long the beam is going to stay on before it shuts off like momentarily and then um, and then it kicks back on after kind of like a, I don't know, like a recharge. Sort of makes it look like it's sparking randomly versus a continuous. If you set it to zero, the beam will stay on the entire time. So again, it kind of just depends on what you're going for on your map. The width of the beam in pixels, I think the default's two. I thought that was way too wide, so I put it to 0.5. Um, the amount of noise. So this number is how like shaky the beam is. And um, so you could see in my sample what it looked like. So let's go back in here. So that's a 10 right there. It's quite a bit of noise. Um, if you go into the higher numbers, it's just ridiculously huge. So, you know, it, again, it just depends on what you're trying to go for in your map. But if you want a, something that looks semi-realistic, a smaller amount of noise is going to look better. Uh, the sprite name, you don't need to change. Um, you don't need to change any of these. The starting frame, what this is used for, starting frame, is if you have two of these right next to each other, you can offset their starting animation frame so they don't look exactly the same. So if you've got two of these near each other, you may want to offset the number, you know, put a two or something in that so that they don't look identical. The strike again is how long the cooldown is between strikes. Damage per second. Um, so this is gonna damage objects. It doesn't seem to do anything to the player. Um, I'll have to check the laser. I haven't checked the laser. But um, the beam doesn't seem to do anything to the player. I thought it did, but um, in its default setting here, it doesn't. The starting entity. So this is where the electricity beam is going to emerge from. So it doesn't come out of this box right here. So you have to pick an entity for the electricity to come out of. And so you can see mine says wire one. So if you come up here and you click on this guy, you'll see that this is one of my rope keyframes and its name is wire one. So what that means is that this beam will start at wire one. The ending entity is where it's gonna fire to. And you'll notice mine is bolded. So you can pick a single point, a single entity, which you know would be any object that has a name on the map. Or you can do what I did, and I placed these things right here, info targets, and I named them electric target, or I abbreviated electric, but I named I named the target. So this is just an entity. I went to my entity tool and it's called info target. So I came over here, I typed in info target, and it gives me this green thing right here. I named it, and then I scattered several of them, and you'll see there's, a, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, there's actually one right there in the center of the carousel, okay? So these info targets, what they do is when this beam from here wants to fire, it's going to look for those randomly and it's going to fire at the info targets randomly. And then it'll shut off, it'll pick a different one, it'll fire at that one, it'll shut off, it'll randomly look around, pick another one, and fire. So if we look back at the settings, our start entity is the source of the beam. The ending entity is where it's going to strike. So if you put multiple things with the same name, it will randomly choose and hit them. If you want it to just hit one object, all you have to do is just put the name of that object right here. Okay, very simple. Hit apply. Start on. And then start sparks and sparks. So what those do is if you look and you watch closely, You'll see when, when this thing goes off, it creates a little sprite of sparks, a little shower of sparks, and it does it on both ends. So when it goes off, 
it'll shoot some sparks and then you'll see where its target is it also showers a little bit of sparks okay so that's what these sparks do um, at the start and end they create a little shower of sparks every time it goes off now like I said it doesn't seem to be damaging the player um, I'll play around with the laser but um, it, it may end up hurting the player I haven't played with it yet so in level design purposes the difference between the laser and the beam is that the beam which I currently am firing right here will pass through objects to get to its target the laser will not the laser will stop at the first thing it hits okay that's the only difference between these two guys and you'll notice these can be anywhere because they use a start entity and an end entity so you could put this anywhere you want um, you know I would probably put it near the area where they're striking but they don't necessarily have to be exactly where the striking's at my start entity is up there and then I've got my targets kind of scattered all around all right so that is your lightning effect or your beam effect I guess and wind effect so what I would like you to do is I would like you to add wind to your map so your power cables sway in the wind and I would like you to also add some random electrical sparking between the power poles you don't have to strike the ground like I did but I would like to see you know say three or four different random strike spots where we can have this electrical bolt shooting out and it could be just pole to pole or you know add an object on the ground it doesn't really matter to me but I would like to see you know four random strike points for the electrical beam alright that is your assignment for today